Uh, next up, we have um, Amit Srivastava from AKS Consulting and Services, and also Tracy Scott from Transport for London, who are going to talk us through the skills transformation at Transport for London. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Hello. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. This is Amit Srivastava from AKS Consulting Services. I mean, we'll talk about the skills gap. I know the skills transformation thing which we have been going through at Transport for London. And believe me, journeys are quite close to you know, TFL's heart. And uh, we'll share about our experiences, what we have been going through for the last few months. And uh, next 15 minutes or so will be quite complimentary. You know, we have talked about the things which we have done in DWP. And there was a very nice presentation from the DHL where, where it is sort of complementing the uh, DWP and the DHL bit. But in the next 15, 20 minutes, I will say, you know, I will try to sum it up. Yeah? So our agenda is sort of uh, very simple in terms of um, what we are doing it, first of all, and then why we are doing it, the business case around it, and then some of the things uh, about our experiences and how we are doing it. it it's more important with so there are lots of uh, experiences which we have um, I mean gathered along the way so we'll try to sum it up in our lessons learned so a couple of slides about the lessons learned or, or experiences you can say so um, and we'll try to go in bit detail about our journey when we say it's step by step thing so um, Tracy and I will try to do it together Tracy will talk about you know, the context and the engagements which we are getting from the, the, the TFL side. So I'll um, let Tracy explain you the context. Thanks, Ramit. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Rebecca for the free publicity. You mentioned Metro Underground, so thank you very much for that. So um, just a quick couple of uh, quiz questions. Can anyone hazard a guess as to how many tube journeys you have in a week in Transport for London? It's four million. <laughs> 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 and we have six million bus journeys. We have about 1.8 million um, rail journeys. So we have a lot of, obviously, operational res responsibility to the general public. But we do also have responsibility to the people that actually work in, in the back offices in, in Transport for London. We have gone through, as I'm sure most public sector organisations will say in this room, massive transformation program in the last three to four years and the, the, the essence of it really was if you think about the fact that TfL has really been defined by its modes of transport I work for London Underground or I work for corporate or I work for surface for example so surface would have their NHR or IM department so would London Underground so would corporate so you can imagine how it was very difficult for us to work together so the transformation program was all about bringing us together and making sure we can have that common language common program so one of the things we have to do is obviously make sure that we are that trusted partner. So TfL IM's vision is to be a trusted partner to IM and everyone else that we serve within London itself. And the way we can do that is making sure that we have the right skills. Now, I know I've heard a couple of people saying, and I think it's been banded around for quite a while, that there's a skills shortage in regards to ICT that's taught in schools and universities. But I have to wonder if we truly know the skills that are even in our organisations to then lead on to educating schools and universities as to what we need in the future. And that's why I think we're all here today, is, is because of Sophia, and that brings us all together. So part of IM and our people objective, which is right at the bottom there, is to make IM a great place to work. Uh, nice and simple in words, probably not as simple in application, but obviously we're doing our best to get there. So the business case, we started researching, I'd say, in around 2011, beginning of the financial year. We knew about Sophia. My background is, is learning and development. I just happen to work in, in IT or IM. And so I knew about Sophia and the skill framework that, and how it could um, be useful to, to TfL. But we wanted to research it and made sure that we actually checked everything that was available. And lo and behold, as I'm sure some of you know, there's little else out there that's that structured and provides that level of guidance and definition. So we knew that Sophia was going to be the best thing for our organisation. We needed to make sure that we had a platform that allowed us to analyse people's skills, understand what the skills are, and more importantly, what the skills gap would be. So there's around 24,000 and a half 
um, permanent employees in Transport for London and 500 of those sit within information management. So we do have a relatively large IT department and four-fifths of that make up our kind of service management infrastructure, the ITIL process. So there's a lot of people there who can utilise obviously um, a, a framework like Sophia. The third bullet point just shows that obviously like everyone else knows we wanted to make sure that there was something there for talent management that would give people the opportunity to plan their careers and see how they can map, not just within IM, but all the other kind of small pockets of IT functions that we have within Transport for London as well. So it was the transparency, ensuring that we have the right skills and also ensuring that we're giving people the opportunity to develop those skills and in, a, again, a structured and understandable way. All right, so <clears throat> having said that, uh, when we came on board and we got this sort of business problem, you know, the business need, the objective, you know, making IM a great place to work and then stating the clear business objective, you know, why we are doing it. Uh, we have decided, you know, we, we took a step back, you know, rather than jumping on and start solving the problem and say CFA is the solution, we take a couple of steps back and started thinking around, you know, what is needed to be done here. And, and, and before doing that, we have decided what approach we should take so that we can go and talk to these 600 people and should be simple enough to explain to them why we are doing it and how we need your help. End of the day, it's, it's them who will make it successful rather than us. No matter how smart a framework you can come up with, it if it doesn't work and people don't get it, then it won't work. So our guiding principle was simple, you know, practicality of the approach, you know, whatever we think has to transform or we should be able to communicate it to the wider audience in a very simple manner. And when I'm saying wider audience means audience from say CIFIA level one to CIFIA level seven in CIFIA terms. Um, the other thing was quite important that, you know, every organization goes through with a lot of organizational changes. I mean, you cannot find any organization which is not going through some or another type of change. And when you're trying to do this bit there, considering our business need, etc., uh, then how you can align yourself with all the other wider initiative. I'm not saying what type of initiative, but you need to be, first of all, aware of that initiative. And the second thing is how you can help them to make that initiative better and at the same time achieve your objectives. So that was our guiding principle in terms of designing our approach. So moving on. <coughs> We thought that if you talk about people, process, and technology, most people understand. And we have started with people and started with the proactive engagement. So the, when I'm saying proactive engagement, I mean that going to the people first rather than expecting people to come to you. And this takes effort. And when we'll talk about the people in detail, we'll talk about the specific things, what we have done to get that people engaged get that thing in people's mind that this is going to be done for better. Not only for the organization, but for you. So you is very important. Why we are doing it? We are only doing it for a particular person. And this is how we are trying to make I am a great place to work. And then um, if you talk about processes, you, know, you can come up with all sort of sophisticated processes, but we have decided to use the existing processes so how we, can, how we can slightly modify the existing processes and make it more appealing so that learning curve is as less as possible. You know, people are going through with change. They've got all day job to do. Think about, say, service management department. They have to do 24-7 work. You know, how you can put people and, and ask them to spare, say, hours to do CFA stuff. So you have to make this, that, that particular thing simple. So we have used and leveraged the existing processes and tried to keep things as simple as possible. In terms of technology, um, again, as I said, the technology which we are going to take must have quick learning curve and it should be simple. So I'm trying to repeat myself saying simple, simple, and simple, but it is very difficult to do things in a very simple manner. And uh, this yellow bit, supported by effective change management, pro I mean, program or process, whatever you call it, it's very easy to say that, okay, uh, I'll, I'll go and implement CIFIA and it will be supported by change management process. But what that exactly mean? So, so understanding the practicality 
of going through the people who are responsible for these you know, um, bits and pieces and engaging them and ensuring that we are on their agenda as well. So that a wider communication is happening, people are understanding what we are doing it, why, the, why we are doing it and how it can help them. So that was sort of uh, our approach. Um, <clears throat> So once we have decided our approach, uh, we started our journey. And these are sort of four areas of our journey. Um, IT skills management framework. When we came on board, we looked into the you know, problem statement and found that there's no consistent way of defining a skill or there's no consistent way of comparing skills. And if we have to find out how we can find a person's transferable skills, those were not there as well. So there was a specific need of IT skills framework that was identified and we took as one of our areas of work. The second bit was moving on further and defining IT professional profiles. And I'll talk in detail what I mean by professional profile because we are taking FTFL IT as a profession. So if IT is a profession, then what are the potential profiles which we have got in IT and what are those? And uh, people engagement. It will come again and again. So people engagement, um, we'll talk about in detail that when we say proactive communication, what exactly we did and what sort of things we have learned and how we have improved. And then the thing which might look a bit odd to start with, job description analysis, but um, that thing is quite a um, very effective thing. And I'll tell you why. You know, if you take a job description and start analyzing it, and find that, okay, your job description has got these 15 CFA skills that says something. Or this job description has got only two CFA skills that says, some, that says something. So immediately you can get an attention of people that, you know, how CFA can be integrated instantly. Showing that whatever text you have written, I have done an analysis, read those things, make an interpretation, and try to join up with CFA, and this is how it looks. I'm not changing anything. I'm just trying to analyze it and finding how it is looking from CFIA world perspective. In other words, industry perspective. We'll talk about that in detail. So <clears throat> IT skills management framework, when we say this is just a sort of bit uh, detailed version of the skills context, which we have discussed in the morning um, in the validated skills presentation and in the previous presentation as well. So what this is doing is, um, if you've got a pro professional, you must be having some sort of professional skills and your knowledge and then behavioral and competencies which are quite specific to organizations. In TFL's case, they call it behaviors and competencies. Um, and then that has to be summed up with your experience and qualification. So that was the IT framework which we have come up with. And um, in, in the framework, we have mapped it to the profile groups, which I'll just talk in a bit. Uh, in a bit. And, and these professional profiles were basically consisting of eight to 12 CFA skills, arranged in core CFA skills, so that your job is all about, and then contribute to CFA skill, which you need to have, have to have to work effectively with other areas of IT, for example, you're a service manager, you need to have say some sort of project management skill which you are contributing to, for example. And then some skills which you need to be aware of. So these things are nicely uh, arranged into contribute to, core and aware of, and uh, backed up by the professional qualifications and IT knowledge, so specific tools and techniques and methodologies, frameworks, etc. cetera. Um, and then so one of the things, and if you just look at the, the blue side, one of the things we wanted to make sure that we did was give people some, um, some comfort that we weren't going to be completely changing their world. Obviously, we've just been through a transformation, and the new IM team as it stands today has been, was born on the 20th of January last year. So we're still relatively new in our work practices and our culture and our behaviours. And we didn't want people to feel that all of a sudden we're changing everything again. And by putting this type of template together, we could actually illustrate that, yes, all this work's going on in the kind of yellow box, but it actually aligns to what's already there in regards to our structure, our positioning, our grade, et cetera, et cetera. So that was probably the biggest challenge we had to face in regards to the people side of things, 
is, okay, what is it going to be? Are you changing my job title? Am I going to get less pay? You know, all those typical questions that would come out. So this was a really good illustration that people could instantly understand that actually it just maps onto it as opposed to you takes over it. Look, yep. so move, moving further, as I have explained, uh, if IT is a profession, then we have identified some um, professional profile groups, first of all. So all these vertical boxes are profile groups. For example, senior IT manager uh, is a profile group which consists of CIO and department has, as a professional profile. And when I'm going into these individual yellow boxes, these yellow boxes consist of those 12 skills uh, arranged in 12 to 15 to sometimes a bit more. You have to be um, sensitive enough to understand how the things are working rather than having a very prescriptive approach. You know, you're not going to have more than 12 skills. So we're flexible enough to accommodate things here and there to make it practical. Uh, and, and these are sort of backed up by this uh, professional skills framework on the left hand side which consists of the you know, competencies, behaviors, experience and knowledge. So this is what, when we, mean by, uh, what we mean by professional profile. Obviously I'm not able to show all 10 here uh, but I think this is um, enough to make the point. And then the important bit, which uh, we have done <laughs> together, and then um, Tracy will explain in detail the, the people management. So for me, thing. I mean, my whole career has been around people. So I had to make sure that the people in IM were going to be, I say protected, it might be too motherish, but you know, protected, and we're going to guide them, and to use the word journey, which is probably been used to death today, but to take them on the journey with us. So we didn't want people to feel that we were doing things to them, that they were part of it and involved and helping to mould and shape what the future was going to look like. So in regards to um, being proactive, even going before this really, was making sure that we had leadership buy-in. So talking to the leadership team, giving them the facts and figures, telling them that other people are actually doing this. And one of the benefits of my team, which is the capabilities team, is that we basically bring L&D and HR professionalism into IM. So we don't work for HR, we work for IM, but we bring a, a, obviously a different skill set. So even speaking to HR for us, we could use the same language that they're used to hearing. So we weren't using jargon or IT speech, we were using HR words so they could connect and understand about the framework, which they all bought into as well, which is absolutely fabulous. So getting back to IM specifically, what we wanted to do, like I said, was involve everybody. So we have actually set up roadshows and we've been inviting everybody in IM, and I think we've about 50, 60% through them now where we're literally going through a similar sort of presentation, giving them information, answering their questions, building things like FAQs, a glossary of terms and um, words and what they mean to us. Because as we've discovered, skills and knowledge and experience can mean different things to different people in different ways. So we wanted to baseline some of the language that we were using and glossaries were really helpful for that. We also wanted to home in on the individual benefits. There's so many initiatives that go around in every organisation that's about the organisation, what it's going to do for the company, how great it's going to look. And we wanted to, yes, talk about that, but make the individual benefits completely and utterly transparent so people would again buy into the actual framework and buy into the work that we're, we're working on at the moment. So what we've done a lot of, and it's, it's worked out really, really well from our project perspective, is aligning ourselves to other TSL HR people initiatives. So career framework production, specialist talent um, frameworks. We've been making sure that we're all kind of singing from that same hymn sheet, at least from the IT perspective. So again, once TSL HR launched their, their frameworks, there's not all these new words and new concepts. They're actually all aligned to our project and vice versa. And that's been a really useful piece of work for one, for us to understand what they're doing and two, for them to understand what we're doing. And then, like I said, we've ad added FAQs. We've got um, even like a specific mailbox. Even though it's a, a BAU project, we do have a project team. So we have obviously project guidelines and deadlines that we have to stick to. And that's probably one of the benefits is that we've actually looked at it as a project as opposed to a piece of work that we're trying to manage alongside the day job. It was recognised that it was important enough and urgent enough to actually take into a project of its own. Right, so I mean, we talked about this job description thing. Um, you know, it's a very simple process which we have followed. You know, pick up a Word file or whatever file you have got for the job description. Read those things in detail, having that Sifia thing in your mind 
and then you, you can map your team or department or group of people in a very nice manner and this one sheet of paper if you show to the department heads and uh, or, or the team leads or the CIO even that, that, that creates a very good um, way of connecting to that particular person and that connection helps them that okay we are not only talking about CIFIA but we have done something which was already there, analyzed it and make it in a visually looking form so that in one piece of paper they can understand what sort of skills they have got. So they can do, all right, okay, you have got project manager, project manager, program manager, and then da 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 da, but no project support skills we have got. And, and that says something. If you haven't got that project support skills or project support skill is sort of weaved into another sort of senior person's job description, again that says something. I'm not trying to jump on any conclusion, but, but that engages people. So maybe this job description initially looked a bit odd in terms of the whole CPI implementation project or, or engagement, but it helps so many purposes. And the first thing was to get the connection with the people who are quite busy, who don't care what you're doing. I mean, why should they? Unless you are giving some, something to them which is of immediate help. So this is why we have um, you know, continued our focus on developing this thing. And also it helps uh, an external person to come in and understand the context. So the more you read about those things, no matter they are good, bad or whatever, but at least those descriptions say something. So in our experience, uh, we have I mean, collected quite vital information uh, from those and help the, use those things to get connected with the people <coughs> to help our people engagement with. So um, in terms of summing up, you know, what we have learned or in our experience, what sort of things we can share or which can be used for next CIFIA implementation or people who are just thinking about implementing CIFIA or they are in the process of implementing it, this is the thing which we have learned. It may or may not sense, make sense to you, but, but these are the real lessons which we have learned that it has to start with a clear stimuli. Otherwise, it won't fly. I mean, if we are implementing CIFIA just for the sake of implementing it, fine. But you will see this story that, you know, that implementation um, digressed or stopped or mothballed or whatever. So it has to start with a clear stimuli. You have to do the groundwork very carefully. You have to start talking about people, you know, picking up your allies, you know, spreading the word, communication, 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 and then determine where you are at the moment and how do you know where you want to go and how do you know how you have arrived. You know, so some sort of measurement you need to put in place that, okay, when we have got 60% people assessed with CPI skills, we'll say stage one is over. And that thing has to be very clearly defined. And then um, doing the work, obviously, it has to be um, there. And then learning bit. So we try to do some sort of, you know, take a step back and learning session. We have done a particular department, and we are going to do the next department. How we can make it better, shorter, more effective, et cetera, et cetera. So these are things which we do in our learning sessions. And then Tracy will um, explain her perspective about the lessons learned. I'll try. So we, are, we, ha we have decided to have a, a good three to five years to see an implementation plan. And our immediate plan really is to utilize the skills analysis as a way of developing structured development plans. So rather than that kind of, hmm, what do I fancy doing this year? It's more structured, it's aligned to people's roles, and we're obviously going to get much more out of it and, and be much more effective with our development. So we started with the basics, you know, we, we understood that we had to change, we had to move with the times, we need to understand what our people do, how they do it, and how proficient they are. Um, I don't know if there's any, any crime in that. And obviously we used to fear because after researching it, it was the best and most suitable and fit for purpose framework. Establish a sense of urgency, yes, definitely, we needed to make sure that we could capitalise on all opportunities. So what could the fear really do for us? Yes, we were looking at it just from a development perspective, but actually when we, when we dug deeper, we can use it, as we've heard today, from a recruitment perspective. We can use it for talent management. We can use it for succession planning. There's lots of things that we can actually use the same data for. But obviously, maturity will depend on how soon we use it for those particular initiatives. Developing that shared vision. 
um, that's really part of change management, is making sure everyone knows what that shared vision is and that why we're changing and the purpose for it, and making sure it's out there. And if it does evolve, that we tell people it's evolved and that it's changed, and don't lead them to believe that it's just remained the same as it did at the beginning. Creating short-term wins, and I would probably say from the project perspective, because um, most of the project team is in the audience today, um, this has been the, the, probably the best part for us. We've decided to focus on one department, do everything that was required from that department, knowing that we could then learn our lessons and develop for the, for the next um, phase, which is we're in now, which is phase two. So we effectively completed one department and actually probably did it better than we thought we could, if I'm allowed to say that. Um, and we've learned lots from it. I mean, it's ridiculous how much, to the point where we're actually almost ahead of the game now in regards to the next um, part of the, the project. So it has really helped to do that kind of slow phased approach. And then you've also got genuine feedback that you can use for the next phase from the people in IM as opposed to it all coming from the project team. And then last but not least, to introduce live new approaches. It's important that obviously it's embedded. Everyone can <coughs> install a piece of software, but to implement a piece of software can be quite difficult. And it's the same with the skills framework. It's all about implementation. So people understand it, they own it, and they're part of it. Again, rather than it just being this overarching framework that sits there that no one really understands. And all of that put together yeah. will, of course, lead to our objective, which is to make IAM a great place to work. Yeah, and Tracy will be taking all the difficult questions. So. <laughs> Probably allows one. I'm going to move us on to the next oh, so. all right. we're, we're quite close to our time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.